What's happening, everybody? Thanks for uh, jumping in with us here for this next episode of Expert Mentors Live. Um, man, episode 13, and uh, I'm your host, John Kitchens, uh, Senior you know, uh, Strategic Business Advisor and Head of Coaching and Mastermind for NAEA. And, you know, these Expert Mentors Live calls have really started to, to take a life of their own and, and um, pretty, pretty amazing content that, you know, I hope all of you understand and appreciate that we've been able to tap into the horsepower of this, this group of our Honey Badger Nation and the Fast Forward Movement. And, and so, as you guys know, there, there's so many talented, talented people in the community and, and so many of these people want to give back and add value. And it's been, it's been really cool. And, um, you know, today I'm super excited to be able to have, um, uh, a gentleman that I've had the opportunity to work with for, for quite some time and um, got a sneak peek at this presentation. Carlos was able to deliver this for us at um, our mastermind that we held um, um, a, a month back in, in Grand Cayman. And so I, I know you guys are in for a treat. It's, it's something that's absolutely um, critical uh, for you guys, for all of us. Um, from, you know, spending the effort and energy to go acquire team members and, and bring, you know, the vetting, the hiring process that we go through and bring people on. And then, you know, it's, it's more important that we're adding value and continuing to re retain our key people. And um, super pumped for Carlos to be able to add this. And, you know, um, Carlos, before we hand it over to you, you want to uh, give, uh, give everybody just a quick, you know, background a little bit about yourself so everybody can get some context and then we can rock and roll absolutely yeah, very happy and excited to see a ton of people jumping in and, and uh, I mean I'm glad uh, there's a, a lot of interest and the value is uh, attracting you know an audience uh, because I think this is super super critical as we you know grow our teams and and you know have the responsibility of other people that are putting their livelihood and their success uh, a little bit in, in, you know, our trust. So um, very, very important to see that a lot of people are jumping in. And uh, myself, you know, I am a um, team leader, real estate agent with EXP Realty, uh, part of the uh, Honey Badger Nation, super excited. Um, moved to the United States from the Dominican Republic when I was 15. And uh, that's why I have a, a very difficult accent. So make sure you're paying attention and follow uh, with a, a lot of intention so you don't miss anything. Um, from there, I started real estate when I was just at 22. I actually went for my classes right out of high school. Uh, but around 21, 22 uh, is when I actually got started. I've been doing it for 12 years. So I'm dating myself a little bit now. 12, going on 13 years um so yeah i'm 33 right now i've been blessed to have been coached by john kitchens uh jay kinder and the crew at naea who helped me you know build my team and uh, grow to over a million dollar in gci consistently and uh having a good sustainable business i uh, have been on forbes magazine who called me the ninja of real estate uh 30 under 30 best-selling author and uh, now you're a humble uh, servant here with whatever I can do to help out so that's kind of a little bit of, of myself and um, my trajectory love it cool so hopefully you guys uh, everybody jumping on with this have your uh, notepad and pen handy and uh, Carlos let's dive in awesome very good so we're talking about retention strategies uh, for a fast growing real estate team. And, uh, you know, the, the audience that this is kind of tailored for is anybody that's building a real estate team that wants to grow fast. You know, it doesn't mean that you may be growing fast right now, but if you are looking to actually fast track the growth of your real estate team, then uh, this is for you and it doesn't matter what platform you're using you know what company you're with uh, at the end of the day the fundamentals are the same in the sense of the strategies the methodologies that uh, I'm going to be introducing to the group today and I'll tell you you know <laughs> there's nothing better than hitting your yourself in the head uh, for wanting to find out 
the right way to do certain things. Uh, so, you know, I actually embarked in uh, the, you know, process of, of finding out uh, these strategies and a methodology that I'll be sharing with you today because I lost some people in my team. And, you know, I've lost people over the years. And as a team lead, it's, it's easier to manage your team and your culture and the value proposition. Um, but when you're growing fast, it, it becomes very, very critical that you have a better system in place. So here are the things that, that we're going to cover. Uh, the first thing is why fast growth is necessary. So if you're not in a trajectory, trajectory right now where you're growing fast well after this you're definitely going to start thinking about growing fast and, and making sure you have a fast growth strategy because that's the name of the game and uh, i'm thankful that being part of the the exp realty movement and being part of uh the organization forced me to you know uh, obtain some uh, strategies to grow faster and uh, that's part of what led me into this you know process because it is very very important that we develop a fast growth a, a strategy the second thing is you know if you're growing fast okay why should you be concerned with retention especially if you feel like your value proposition on its own stands alone and you really don't need to you know do too much uh, I believe you do. I believe there are things that, that you need to be doing. I believe there are things that are important. And those are the, the things that I'll be touching on as we go along here. So be concerned with rotation, care about the people you bring aboard, and make sure uh, you, know, you have a strategies to, to keep them happy. That's what is ultimately the name of the game. Uh, and with that, you know, we're talking about proven strategies. I went through a lot of research, a lot of due diligence, spoke with a lot of people, implemented these systems into my own team. And really, this is not necessarily uh, rocket science or anything that uh, you, you, you'll get it. When you see it, you'll be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I definitely need a system to make sure you know, this is something that, that I make part of my business. Right. So it's just proven systems, not, you know, hypotheses. These are things that are working right now in fast growth organizations. And then they ultimately, at the end, I'm going to simplify it into a, you know, a simple checklist, a simple formula so that you really have something to grab and go and understand how to, take advantage of this whole, you know, methodology that I'll be uh, going over here. So with that, we'll start with the first portion. So why fast growth is necessary? You know, fast growth is necessary because time is very valuable. You know, in, in one of our mastermind meetings, uh, probably a year or so ago, uh, Blake Sloan, who is one of our masterminds, is an awesome individual. And uh, he did an amazing presentation. And you know, one of the things that hit me was he was like, no more onesies and twosies. And if you've ever had a team and, and you're, you know, growing that team, you know that, hey, sometimes you get one agent and you'll spend a whole week, two weeks, three weeks training that one single agent. You know, sometimes you get two agents and you spend a ton of time training that one agent. So when you're looking at a fast growth strategy, the best thing to do is to bring bring in a good group of people, you know, five, six, 10, 12, and put them through a book camp so that you don't have that time invested in just a few people who may not even pan out, you know, because as we know, sometimes uh, there is uh, an early churn on the people. Let's say you invite five people to your team, you know, and then only two show up and, you know, you train those two. So you want to make sure you have what I call a, a predictable and a scalable agent recruiting system. So you have a machine that's bringing agents. And whether you're working to bring people aboard to your team or you're looking to bring people into your brokerage or into uh, some uh, another brokerage like EXP, and we are all shareholders in EXP, so it is our brokerage in sense. And whether you're doing one or the other, at the end of the day, you need a system that is consistent. It's all about consistency. Consistency is the name of the game. So you need to make sure that when you 
bring uh, your strategy, whatever fits your 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 culture, your mold. Uh, you know, some people are recruiting a networking events. Some people are doing lunch and learn. Some people are doing uh, one-on-one meetings, webinars, whatever that is, you make it into a recurring system that is scalable and it's something that is predictable so you can bring people at a fast pace. So, you know, a lot of us have been doing that and have been doing very, very good at that. Um, and then I know we have a ton of other, other training on how to accomplish that uh, in, in our uh, system. But just know that it's necessary. You gotta have those systems in place, and you gotta make sure you're uh, bringing a lot of people in. So once that starts happening, then you know you start experiencing the challenges, right? And, and that's the challenge of fast growth, and the reason why we we need some of these systems to make sure that the fast growth is retainable. Um, the first thing is the return on investment. You know, when you bring somebody aboard that joins your team, there was time invested in that person, not only by you, but by the people who introduced you to that person. And, you know, the, the social capital invested, uh, the word of mouth. I mean, there's a lot that goes on. So just because you, you only had to get on the phone with somebody and they were an easy, you know, person to bring to your team, doesn't mean that you know it's not an investment there, there is an investment there uh, and we need to be mindful of that that's why we want to retain everybody we come in contact with uh you know there is a cost of attrition and you know there, there is a cost of not having the person be bought into your culture and be happy you know i've gotten on the phone with agents that are you know not satisfied with with certain things within my company that have nothing to do with my group just because you know i want to make sure my company has a good reputation out there so i got on the phone with people just to tell them hey what can i help you with is there anything i can do for you and you know i understand that the person that introduced you to the company may not be providing you with support what can i do to help because the last thing i want is somebody to you know leave the the company as a whole and say you know it's not a good environment for me or something like that you know that's a minimal occurrence that, that but i've seen it and uh you know i'm always happy to retain anybody <laughs> i don't care if it's my team or, or anything else i want people happy out there um, you know, the cause of lack of sales success. So that's part of what we're going to touch on. Hey, you want retention? Make sure people are succeeding in real estate. If they don't succeed, they don't benefit your team anyway. So you have a dead weight there. So you want to make sure they're successful. And then, you know, if you bring somebody in, but they're not bought into the culture, they don't really believe that can be damaging to the whole organization. So it's a big challenge. These are the reasons why you want to make sure you retain people. Uh, you, you want to have the systems in place. You want to make sure that uh, your people are happy, that they're selling, and that they're crushing it because that's going to maintain the health of your entire organization. And remember, what you do close to you is going to duplicate across your entire team, your, time, your brokerage, your entire organization. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what you're doing and how you're leading by example, because that's what's going to, uh, you know, inspire other people in your group to do the same thing. So, you know, let's talk about the, the key areas that I feel require duplicable systems, that I feel require processes that will help you in retaining your agents. You know, so area number one is the managing and tracking of the experience that the agent is having. So that's very, very important. Uh, secondly, adoptions of tools, systems, and services. So we'll be touching and breaking down all of this. Uh -huh. Carlos, are you going to, um, can you give us an example of, of that? Like, how, how are you managing and tracking the, uh, the experience? Yeah, we will go over all of that. Okay, great. I just want to make sure we give everybody Excellent. Some. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of an outline of the different systems, uh, and then we're going to go deep uh, into each one of them, okay? 
So the managing and tracking of the experience, the adoptions of tools and services, uh, and the systems contribution to their success, meaning sales and uh, building their team, uh, scalable and duplicable culture, right? So, you know, whatever you are doing that's working for you, like these systems right here, you want to make sure everybody knows them so that it's duplicable and scalable and everybody, you know, is contributing to the overall success of the entire group. And then identification and empowerment training and alignment for your leaders because there's always it doesn't matter if your group is 10 or 15 or a hundred or a thousand there are some leaders there and you need to make sure you bring them close to you and that you align them because those are going to be the ones that are going to ripple through the entire organization so let's get right into it so the the main thing i want you to think about i want you to think of this as a line a dividing line and on the left-hand side, you have your agents that you, you just brought aboard. And on the right-hand side is where you want to get them to. So if they stay in the left-hand side, they're vulnerable to attrition. Okay, they're vulnerable to not being retained. They're going to be easy swayed to leave. If you move them to the right over the line, that's when you'll be able to actually uh, retain them. They're going to be bought in. So the different strategies that I'm going to present are going to be strategies to move an agent from the left to the right. So we're going to move them over the line. So that's the goal, and that's what I want you to keep in mind as we go along here. So let's go into that customer experience, and I can definitely, you know, feel some questions, John, if you feel uh, I'm not being specific enough. But, you know, the first thing with the experience is, did they have a positive, delightful onboarding experience uh, that met or exceeded their expectations, right? And I know, uh, you know, within our group, sometimes that can be a challenge. We're the fastest growing organization in the country. Uh, EXP Realty is growing leaps and bounds. We're onboarding agents like nobody else has ever done in the real estate industry. So sometimes there are some roadblocks and it takes a little bit longer than going to a mom and pop brokerage that can sign them up and have them, in, have them in MLS within, you know, two hours. Right. But if you set those expectations properly, it's okay, right? So we're talking about meeting or exceeding the expectations. So if the expectations is, it's going to take two weeks for you to onboard, which is what I'm telling my people, even though it's taking less than that, uh, then they're not unhappy. You know, I tell them, hey, listen, here's what's going to happen step by step. The first thing, you're gonna submit your application. It's gonna take two to three days to get the contract. Review that contract, let me know as soon as you get it. If you have any questions, let's do it quickly because after you sign that contract, it's gonna take another two to three days for the brokerage to sign. And then after that, they're going to send you an email, let you know that uh, they're ready to activate your license. Not until you activate the license will they start working on your tools. So if you want your tools, your email, and you know, your backend and all the, the good stuff, you have to activate your license. If you don't respond quickly, you're going to ultimately uh, be hung up a little bit. So I set those expectations. I tell them, listen, the email that's going to come with the contract may be caught in spam. It may be caught in your promotion staff. You know, make sure you, you look at, at those areas before you think you haven't received it. If for any reason you sign the contract and you don't hear back, let me know. So, you know, we set expectations properly. Uh, obviously, if you're recruiting a lot of people, you can employ somebody uh, in our group. We have, we have uh, services that actually take care of the onboarding process for you. So definitely take advantage of services like that if you're really, really overwhelmed and you can manage this yourself. Uh, but having that experience, setting those expectations properly, make sure that they have a good experience going in, make sure that you, you know, find uh, their rocks, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? Oh, you need to transfer 20 listings. Well, that's a big endeavor. Let's, let's see how we can optimize that and make it simple and, and ultimately you know, make it a seamless experience. I mean, it's like moving from a house to another. It is very, very, you know, challenging at times, but if we do it as a team, it's going to be 
easy breezy. So that's the way that I present that. You know, does that help, uh, John, on that one? Yeah, it, it absolutely does. You made me think of something, and, and I just want to make sure everybody understands and, and gets this, is that retention, retention starts day one, right? It starts the moment that they, they encounter in the first conversation that they have with you. And it's, it, retention doesn't start day 33 that they've been on board, day 106. I mean, retention starts the moment that you have that conversation with them and, and really focusing in on the entire experience um, that, that they have. You know, um, you know Jen, um, uh, Jennifer Weiner last week had, had a, you know, the last episode, episode 12, she had, you know, the, the experience for our clients. And so you guys, you know, I think what, you know, what Carlos is bringing here for, for all of you is that it's not only the experience for our clients, but we have to have the experience for our team members. If we want to build lifetime value, we focus on lifetime value with our clients. We need to make sure that we're focusing on lifetime value in the experience with our, with our um, um, team members. Carlos, did we lose you? Well, looks like we lost Carlos. Hopefully we'll get him back. I know he's uh, having some, he was having some storms there in, uh, down in uh, Orlando there in Florida. So we'll get Carlos right back here in just a second. So you guys, you guys hang tight and uh, we'll, we'll rock and roll as soon as he jumps back in. Uh, continue with the presentation. There he is. All right, we got you back. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, my internet acting up here. Let me get this sharing going again. We'll blame it on the storms. <laughs> yeah, we got a thunderstorm here really, really bad. So, <laughs> no um, very good. So, do you want me to keep going here? Yeah, keep rocking, man. Awesome. So, you know, the next element is do they feel part of your team, of your organization? Are they part of the family or did you just bring them aboard? and left them hanging dry because, you know, ultimately if they're not feeling part of your organization, uh, people join movements, you know, people join, you know, groups. They want to be part of a community. They're buying into you. They're buying into the community. Um, so make sure you plug them in, you know, add them into our community, the Honey Badger group, you know, make sure they, if you have a, a group for, um, your own team uh, in your office, make sure they're part of that, make sure they know when the team meetings are, you know, everything across the spectrum. And again, this is very critical, even if you're only doing, you know, a small team of three, four, five people, it doesn't matter. They need to be, uh, you know, embraced. They, they need to be part of something. People want to be part of something. So make sure you have a process for, for that part of the experience as well. Um, do they know what is available to them and where to find them? Uh, in our specific example, right, you know, do they know how to go into EXP world? Do they know that they can go into accounting? They, they, they can go into agent services. They can go and take classes. Uh, we actually do tours of, of our new recruits in EXP world. And that's been invaluable because they sometimes feel uncomfortable uh, at the beginning and they feel like, oh, this is not you know, a, a good thing for me and they leave. So what you want is to remove that. It, it takes 30 seconds if you're holding their hand to do that. Now, as our group is growing, we actually been loop lumping people. So I did a tour recently with three individuals at once. Uh, you know, I, I met three people in EXP world. I took them around. I introduced them to a person over in accounting. And I'll give you a little bit of a trick. I always go to accounting because there's usually not, not many people there. So I can talk to somebody very quickly. Um, so I take them there. I take them to the auditorium. I say, here's where most of the classes happen. I tell them, go into expcloud.com. That's where the calendar is. So they know where things are. They know where they can find help. And they know who their support structure is. You know, make sure that they know uh, who is in in their sponsorship line if you're you know with exp and those are some of the things that ultimately will manage that experience and, and you know keep it in check 
So if you're not doing that, then how can you expect the people that you're bringing aboard to do it, right? So make sure that you lead by example, you're, you do that, and then ultimately uh, your, your entire group will ripple an amazing experience for everybody that comes aboard. That's why you're the ninja, taking them to accounting to get questions. That's why uh, that is a ninja. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I like to uh, manage my time properly. So right. plus it's, it's good. You know, if you take them to agent services, sometimes there's a line there. They have to wait a minute or two. Uh, that's the wrong first impression. So I take them to a place where they're like, wow, what? Somebody's live right here, right now to talk to me? You're kidding. I tell you how many wows, it's unbelievable. Like when that happens, they're like, whoa, you know, it, 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 like it really is powerful. That's awesome. Um, so, so yeah, so ultimately, you know, um, oops, the goal is if they have a delightful experience, they're going to be over the line. If they have a good or average experience, they're going to be behind the line. So remember, good is not good enough. It has to be amazing. It has to be delightful. It has to be a great experience. The next is adoption of tools and systems. So, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, tools like this, uh, expert mentors. Uh, we have the Certified Expert Advisor certification. We have EXP World. And everybody that has a team or, you know, a brokerage has tools and resources. Make sure your people are bought in to your tools and source and, and you know and systems because if somebody gets bought into that and builds their business around it, they're more likely to stick around. You know, it's gonna be hard to leave an environment where you're benefiting from the tools and services and, and you don't want to start all over again. So that's very, very important. Let's say you have have them get certified as an expert advisor. Well, you know, guess what? If you go somewhere else, now you lose that designation. I mean, I, I can't think of anybody who doesn't want to be called an expert advisor in real estate. I, you know, I just uh, don't see how that's not valuable. You want to make, we, we try to get our people to do. We welcome them to the expert advisor certification process, tell them to go to the course get the, uh, you know, the, the training, the scripts and everything, because, uh, you know, remember we want them to sell, we want them to be successful, that's how we all succeed. Um, are they consuming the training content and taking advantage of coaching opportunities? Uh, you know, we have uh, coaching classes in the Honey Badger group, in NAEA, uh, there, there are masterminds in EXP, there's this expert mentor uh, training, uh, you know, EXP has the uh, ICO conversations uh, every week where I used to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for those things at certain points in my career. You know, I remember one time I bought a program just so that I could hear people who are successful in the real estate industry tell their stories. So now we get that included and, you know, it, it's super powerful. So you want to make sure they, they see the value that they're consuming and that they're taking advantage of all that there is out there. You want it, and you know, this may sound harsh, but you want it to be painful for them to move to a new team or brokerage, period. You know, it's like, man, you know, I, I want to go, but if I go, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to lose that, I can't do this. And, uh, you know, it's just, never mind, I'm staying. Let me figure out what, what's going on here, you know. And, again, this is above and beyond the stocks and the revenue share that, that, that we give with EXP Realty because at the end of the day, they're not going to earn that if they're not successful in real estate or if they're not successful building a team. And sometimes it takes a couple of months for some people to get traction with that. I mean, those couple of months, if they're not getting other things like training, resources, friendships, and which we'll talk a little bit more about, they're more likely to, you know, move, in, move on and go somewhere else. And that's where you have that attrition. And these are some of the things that I did wrong early on that cost me some people. And... That's ultimately why I came up with, with these strategies. Any questions on this area, John, that, that you see? Or it, it's, it's really making sure that you guys, it's your job as leaders to articulate the value, right? There's a, there's a little saying that um, 
you know, value unarticulated is value unappreciated. So it's your job as the leader to really clearly and repeat and articulate the value that they have. Um, if not, they're not going to appreciate it. So it's, it's really important that, that, you know, never assume, right? So it's, it's uh, never, never assume intelligence for the other person. So never assume that they just understand and get it. You have to take the time and articulate really the value and the importance of becoming that expert advisor. And it's just like you said, you know, it's, they, they have to succeed in sales. They have to succeed or, or they're not going to stick. So that's uh, no, it's just, it's awesome. Good stuff. Excellent. Um, so again, you know, if they do the tools and systems and become dependent uh, on them, you're moving them over the line, you know? If they're not, there's no dependency, really, they're not using anything at all from your company, your team, your environment, I mean, you better watch out, because it takes two seconds for them to go somewhere else. So keep that in mind. Um, then, you know, the overall sales success. So we were uh, alluding a little bit to that uh, in the tools and services, but hey, you know, are you getting them to make commitments for them? themselves to succeed are they setting goals are they tracking their progress are they telling you what they want to accomplish whether it is in growing a team growing their organization or growing their sales <clears throat> excuse me so if they're making those commitments they're more prone to succeed and that's good because you know if they get a new listing if they get a new sale pending if they get an escrow or a closing that's going to keep them more aligned with your team with your group and your organization you know are they generating leads for their business or are you giving them leads you know that's very very important as well because if they're getting leads whether it is from strategies that you taught them for from things that were introduced to them by the brokers, the organization, the team, they're going to attribute that value to you. They wouldn't have had that otherwise. So ultimately, it's very, very important that they are generating business. That's where everything begins in the lead generation. Then from there, are they working with clients? Are they writing contracts? Are they making excitement for their progress that's the most important part of it because some people bring somebody and let's say if they're not growing that organization they're struggling and stuff like that or they not seeing progress you know they're, they're going to feel a little bit down so if that's their goal and that's their focus Make sure that you help them see progress, even if it is in, in learning, in conversations, in presentation. In the presentations, you're gonna get Carlos, I think we're you're freezing up on us again. That dang storm is getting us. This is a really good thing. Hey, John, can you see me or, or no? I got, you. I got you back. I got you back. Awesome. Maybe we should do, can we do mine without the video? Maybe, maybe the audio only? I don't know. Uh, well, I guess I'm broadcasting my screen, so it, it has to be with the, with the video. Never mind. Well, you can hear me now, right? Yep, loud and clear. Awesome, all right. So yeah, so if they're showing excitement in their progress and, and they're making progress in their career, whether it's just you know introducing the opportunity to people, even though they haven't you know said yes yet, uh, or you know they're meeting with clients but they haven't had a contract yet, then ultimately that's going to move them over the line. So if they're seeing signs of success, they move over the line. If they're not, if they're overwhelmed, they think, oh my God, what did I get myself into? There's so much change, so much different, then they're staying behind the line. Anything you want to add or, or ask on this one? No, I love it. I just, um, I, I, I just wrote down, I love the moving over the line, right? Just that visual, you know, are, you, are, are we doing the things that we need to do to move them, you know, 
to a retention state um, or are they still staying behind? So it's just a good, it's just a good visual to have. It's, it's really good. Absolutely. You know, again, these are methodologies that, that require you to, you know, have a, a, a checklist and a system, which I will share uh, here as we get closer to the end. Um, so let's talk about a scalable culture, you know. Are you onboarding your agents that are coming aboard to your culture? Do they have clarity of what you stand for? You know, and what that means is, basically what energy are you you know emanating throughout you know are you an organization that focuses on results are you a team that focuses on fun are you you know what what are you guys doing as a collective like one of the things that we do i mean we love to have fun here we have events uh we we have lunch and learns we have things that we do together as a group we have masterminds and you know our culture is we all help each other you know we all contribute to each other we try to get together with each other constantly and you know that's kind of who we are you know and what we do so it's very very important that you define who you are what you do what you stand for and that you are emanating that throughout your organization are they participating you know if you explain the culture and they're not participating they're not uh going to the meetings going to the events you know we have a, a an event here coming up in orlando uh, Tony Robbins and, um, you know, one of the Shark Tank guys, and, uh, you know, and then there's three speakers, Gary B, I think is the other one. So we've got like 20 of our group going to that just from here, from Orlando. And, you know, it's not something I'm hosting and not something we're, we're, you know, putting any effort into it other than communicating and saying, hey, you know, let's go everybody to that. And guess what? You think we're going to invite some other agents to it? You betcha. You yep. know, <laughs> we, got, we got agents going uh, that we're building relationship with and we're just showing them, hey, you know, there's 15, 20 people from our company going to this event, you know, come hang out with us. And, and they're like, whoa, really? That's, that sounds awesome. And now they're part of that energy, part of that culture, everybody having fun, sharing together. They see the mindset. You know, when we're there, we're talking about books. We're talking about growing. We're talking about sales. We're talking about amazing things. They can't help it but be attracted by that kind of environment so make sure they're doing that you know invite people to your local events your regional events uh we have uh our conference in new orleans coming up and uh you know we we have events throughout the year uh you know the mastermind events you know make, make sure that whoever fits with the event can attend that event, you know, and, and you invite as many people as possible. And if they are going to those events and they're taking, uh, taking you up in those offers, they're attending your team meetings, then they are more likely to be retained. Uh, if they go to those places, they go to those meetings and all of a sudden they make some friends, definitely they're more likely to stay because now they've got a relationship there. They got people they like, they got people they bond with. Um, and then ultimately, if they become raving fans and they're promoting you and your team, then absolutely they are bought in. You know, they are part of the, the organization. They're more likely to stay. You know, if they're promoting it on social media. They updated all of their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram, and are proud to be part of your company then all of a sudden you've got somebody that is more likely to be over the line. So if they're embracing your culture and your values and telling everybody about it, they're going to be over the line. If they're feeling left out and out of place, they're going to be behind the line. Any comments, John, or questions on this one? No, I, you know, and, and, you know, it's just the encouragement, getting them, you know, um, to, to, involved you're gonna to have to do things together and then you're gonna to start to see where they individually there's tremendous value um especially you know there's tremendous value for all of us especially with exp to get inside of the community and get get really more engaged you know i mean that's uh, for you know that that was kinder's strategy you know taking over market dominance was you know rubbing elbows with all the influential people in the marketplace and and just being out there talking about talking about real estate talking about the company and so it's just there's some just good principles some good practice there and and just be just keep your eye on your people right those that are not engaging you know find ways to that that 
they enjoy to get them engaged, right? You know, what, what's important to them? And that, cause that's the station that they tune into and, and find, find events and find things that, that excite them that, that you can, you know, participate in and, and do. So it's, um, it's just important. So great point. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that, you know, is critical, as I've been saying throughout this presentation, is making sure, you know, those people who are leaders know all of this. And, you know, that's kind of the last uh, part that I, that I want to cover here. And that is, you know, the, the leadership growth and, and alignment. You want to identify who the leaders are, who are the people who are influencing others and then empower them to continue their leadership growth and development. You know, make them, hey, you know, in our brokerage, we have a mentor program. Make them a mentor pro mentor, and, you know, help them participate in that and, and become mentors of people that are coming aboard in the organization if they're interested in that. Uh, you know, make sure that they get more face time with you or, or time in the cloud. I mean, we do, we do meetings in, in the cloud as well as part of our, our community. And that's also something that, you know, keeps people together uh, as well. Um, so, you know, empower them, uh, make sure they have exclusive leadership opportunities and make sure that, that you know, you have a, a special, because again, if you have a, a, a big team or a big brokerage, a big organization, uh, you got to bring those people out that are really helping you champion your brand, champion your your group, champion whatever it is that you're doing, your culture, and make sure they feel loved and that they ultimately, you know, are empowered to continue doing what they're doing great. And, you know, when, when it comes to leadership, everybody wants to grow and they want to lead their own group. They, they want to build their own team. So, you know, that's why the EXP opportunity is so amazing because we can do that. And we can help them and the more they grow the more everybody grows and the more it's awesome for everybody so you know identifying those diamonds those people that you know are key uh, will blow up your business because if you give them more time and you help them more they're going to be more encouraged to go out and continue doing what they are doing already so it's very critical that you have you know this kind of stuff in your schedule and, and, and you know, these meetings, these systems, these structures set up so that you don't lose track of it with the, with the busyness of everything else. Uh, and, you know, if you identify those leaders and you, you know, help them grow to that even higher position of leadership, they're going to be over the line. You know, if you don't, and they feel neglected, they feel in love, you know, they're not going to work as hard probably, you know, they're going to have more roadblocks and they're going to be, you know, perhaps a little bit behind the line as well. Yeah. They're, they're, um, they're going to start looking for other opportunities is, is, and we talk about this all the time and we have, you know, for the last seven years in mastermind, you know, the fundamental flaws in the team model is that if you don't, have the opportunity the people come out of the top and they go find opportunities somewhere else and so it goes back to what we were talking about earlier that you know you have to articulate the opportunity that lays out in front of them and and so that they know that they can grow into a leadership capacity within your organization and that there's going to be opportunity for them to to mentor and lead others and you know we, we can't assume they, we don't, we don't, we don't want them to, you know, just, Hey, yeah, that's there. We have to articulate it. We have to have that dialogue. We have to have that conversation over and over and help them paint that picture for, for their, for their growth. Um, or, or they will, they'll, they'll start looking at other opportunities if you don't help them realize the opportunities that they have. And there's no other better business. There's no other better model within, within, you know, real estate that allows for, this type of opportunity to where you can keep people <clears throat> for their entire career. Absolutely. And, you know, that's why we're so blessed to, to be part of this opportunity. However, we cannot neglect just because of it, you know, because uh, embracing and empowering our leaders ultimately is going to help them do even more and reach their ultimate goals and, and be, 
more amazing than they even are today. And that's part of the game, you know? So, so, cause there are two types of, you know, in that when, once you get into that position where you have somebody who's doing great and yeah, they're not going to leave the company, but they can mentally leave the group, which loses an asset, you know? Uh, loses loses a, a great person that is an asset to the community. Where if you empower that person to give back to your community, to to you know show up, to to be part of the culture, then it benefits the entire organization. Absolutely, it's very good. So you know, in conclusion, the the main checklist is this. All right. So you know, as leaders, I think you know we have the responsibility to implement, manage, track, and teach this formula to lock our new recruits into the teams and organizations that we lead. So, you know, the, the first thing is announcement, you know, make sure everybody's announcing uh, the new partnership one way or another. I mean, there are different ways to do it. You know, there's people that don't want to go and chat it out of the rooftop um, and they have more of a stealth mode. With that said, you know, you want to make sure, hey, they update their social media. That's a way of announcing it. You know, if, if you, let's say you brought somebody in from Keller Williams and they still have Keller Williams all over the social media channels, oh, you know, they, it's not a good sign, <laughs> you know? You give them a little bit of a notch and say, hey man, you know, you're still working at Keller? What, what do you mean? Well, you know, that's what your LinkedIn says. Oh man, yeah, let me go update that. Um, so definitely very important. We truly have a positive, delightful experience. Uh, you know, make sure they depend on the systems and, and tools. I mean, you know, it's very, very important that they're using the tools and resources we provide so that they can be empowered and grow their business. And it's not like we're not providing amazing tools and strategies. We are. Uh, you know, make, make sure they're engaging in the culture uh, and the growth and the opportunities. They have self success. They rave about the team and refer agents. The most powerful thing is when you have somebody so happy that even if they don't want to recruit, they end up referring people to you because they just can't shut up about how happy they are. You know, that's, that's the raving fan you have. Uh, yeah, you make sure they're making money. You know, make sure they, they have profits for um, their efforts. Uh, they establish new relationships within the team. They have friendships. You know, they attend the events that you have going on and the company has going on. They set goals and commit to those goals and that they grow as leaders in the organization. If you keep track of, you know, these things and, uh, you know, make sure you're checking off uh, these things uh, as you see them around for your, your recruits, you're going to be able to retain more people and you'll be able to avoid the, the pitfalls of, losing people within your organization, team or brokerage or, you know, whatever uh, uh, environment it is that you're in. Love it. Love it. Great stuff. Great stuff. Any, anything uh, that you would recommend, any, any books or anything that would really help everybody um, kind of focus on growing this and, and um, focusing on the experience, anything that you would recommend or that, that you've paid attention to that's helped um, with your retention strategies? Well, I mean, you know, I, I think this is more organization more than anything. Like, as I said at the beginning, like we all know these things and, and we all, you know, this is not rocket science. I think it's more a, of a compilation, you know, thinking of our culture on the team environment, a small little thing. And how do we make sure that remains? Because when I go back to my team, the reason, you know, uh, we lost people was because of the opportunity, you know, and, and because of, you know, uh, the, the fact that they didn't have another growth ceiling to go to within the company, right? But the culture pieces were there. Like we were doing these things in a small scale, and a lot of us are. So we need to think about the larger scale. Like when you have somebody in your small team of five, six people, you know, you, you definitely want to make sure they have the tools and the experience and all that and you manage it even better. So it was more uh, research, you know, online. You know, I, I did uh, a lot of research in the direct selling industry. Uh, there's no question about that because, you know, they grow huge organizations. 
Um, so plugging into that is a big recommendation if you're growing quickly um, because, you know, they, they manage a lot of growth in people, you know. So if you look into the direct selling industry, uh, is, is, is one area that I would go deep into, especially, you know, if you're with EXP, uh, you know, there is a multi-level element to it. Uh, so buy some books on, on that. Uh, you know, and, and make sure you're getting educated on, on, on that element if that's part of what you're trying to accomplish within the company. No, that's awesome. Great, uh, great recommendations there for where people, you know, to look, to study and, and improve the, you know, the overall um, well-being to move, to move uh, their team members across the line. So it's good stuff. Any questions uh, for you guys that are on, um, you can post them in the chat or throw them in the Q and a, if you have any questions for, for Carlos. Um, one, one of the books that I did recommend um, on episode 12 with Jennifer was um, the power of the power of moments book with uh, Chip and Dan Heath. And it's, it's, it's amazing you know, for that, for your clients, but it's also can be applied even with your, with your team and creating those, those moments. So I think, um, you know, definitely that's, that's a great recommendation. We talked about Jack Mitchell's book, hug your customer. He also has one that's like hug your, hug your team as well. So those are, those are great. And there's a lot of principles that, that, that apply, right. That overlap for our clients that also lay right in for, our team and we want to make sure we get sometimes we get so fixated on on our clients that we don't um you know we don't we lose a little little sight a little focus on on our team so man carlos great yeah. great stuff uh man i i and one thing uh, john and something that you said as far as application you know when i when i did this uh presentation of our mastermind you know, uh, Mike Otto pulled me out and he's like, man, this is awesome. Can you, can you send me the slides? Because, you know, we need to do this stuff with our customers. Like this applies everywhere. You know, it's about loving the people you sold to, right? You, you sold them something and they bought it. So now you got to move them over the line so that they become raving fans. And it applies everywhere. It applies with your staff. Are you moving your, your staff, you know, your administrative people over the line? You know, heck, are you moving your, your new relationship, uh, you know, your wife or your girlfriend over the line, right? right. So, so it, as you said, it's a great vehicle, you know, that applies to a lot of areas. Uh, we just got to be thinking about, about pro, uh, fulfilling the promise, really, because there is a promise there and we are presenting that promise. Are we helping in fulfilling that promise? That's right. Absolutely. And, and it's ongoing, right? It's ongoing. If not, they'll slip back across the line. So um, it's, yeah. it, it applies with everything, right? I, I, you know, I apply the, you know, it's the notion of even, you know, for, for married couples, right? You, you, you constantly have to be dating your, your, your significant other um, or she'll move across the line or, you know, he'll move across the line. And, and, um, and so it's just the same thing here, right? You've got to constantly be, be dating your team, constantly be dating your customers and, and keep them, keep them on um, the right side of the line. Absolutely. And, you know, remember that it's duplicable leadership too, because, you know, as your organization grows, you can't love and hug everybody, you know, but Hey, you know, there's people doing, really cool things even with that like if you have an exclusive event you know for your group that you invite you know people who are really raving about your company that's one way to to give them face time and love them and care for them and stuff like that but on a day-to-day -day basis the key is to make sure that you know you identify those leaders who are really responsible for the overall growth of your group and you know when you do that you focus on them so they focus on the people that they uh, also brought aboard. Right. For sure. Great stuff, man. I really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time and adding value and really being a true expert mentor and uh, adding value to everybody today. For all of you guys on the call with us live um, or going to listen to this recording, man, give Carlos some love inside the Facebook group and, and share kind of what your biggest takeaway was. We really appreciate that. Um, I know Carlos will appreciate the takeaways and the love. So, so do that. And 
And for, for any of you guys on listening to this, if, if you have something of value that you want to give back to the community, man, reach out to me. We would love to get you scheduled in for another episode of Expert Mentors Live. Awesome. Carlos, thank you, man. Have a great day. Appreciate everybody on. You guys rock it. Thanks for having me, John. And thanks to everybody who was aboard. I appreciate you all. And as you always know, feel free to reach out if I can help with anything. Uh, my cell phone is 407-744-7190. Text me. I get texts you know, all the time from people. And uh, you know, I'm more than happy to help. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, guys.